This is the second video for section 3.3 on more check digit systems. In this lecture, I'll be talking about ISBNs and credit card numbers. Many of the methods that we discussed use what's called a weighted sum. For a weighted sum, we take the digits of our ID number and we multiply them in order by the pattern of numbers called weights. We get a bunch of products and we add up those products and we get some result and we make sure that that result satisfies whatever criteria it's supposed to satisfy. Another example that uses a modified weighted sum is ISBN, the International Standard Book Number. There's different kinds of ISBN that have different lengths, but the simplest kind is one that it's a 10 digit long number. And just like a UPC code, it's broken up into groups that help identify the book in various different ways. So we have a group identifier, the next four digits identify the publisher, and then from that publisher, we have the next four digits identify the title, so whichever specific book was published by that publisher, and then the 10th digit is a check digit. So the way that we validate an ISBN is we create a weighted sum with weights 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And this time, the criteria is that the weighted sum should be evenly divisible by 11. So that's a little unusual. The patterns that we talked about in the previous lecture all had to end in zero. This time it's a little bit different. It has to be evenly divisible by 11. Okay, so for example, we've got an ISBN here. So what we're gonna do is very similar to what we did in the previous video. We're gonna take our digits, 06714 81835. And this time the weight pattern is 10, 9, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So we're gonna get a bunch of products. Again, having a calculator handy is nice here. Six times nine is 54, seven times eight is 56, one times seven, four times six is 24, eight times five is 40, eight times three is 24, three times two is six, five times one is five. So I've got a bunch of things to add here. So zero plus 54 plus 56, plus seven, plus 24, plus 40, plus four, plus 24, plus six, plus five. So I'm gonna grab my calculator and add all those up. And when I add those up, I get 220. Now, what am I checking about this number? Well, I want this to be divisible, evenly divisible by 11. So to figure out if it is divisible by 11, I divide it by 11. So on my calculator, I get 220 divided by 11, and I get 20. And because I got no decimal part, that means that 11 goes in evenly with a zero remainder, and so that means that 220 is divisible by 11. So the answer to this question of is it's divisible by 11 is yes. So that means that this ISBN, this book number, is valid. Let's do another example. So this time we've caused a substitution error, right? So we've replaced one of the digits in the previous number by a different digit, and we wanna know, is this error detected? So remember to try to detect an error, we run our validation process, and now what we're hoping for is that the validation process will come back with the answer no, that this number is not valid. So we're gonna start the same way, 06714, Again, our weight pattern is 109876, Five, four, three, two, one. So we multiply all those out. Zero times 10 is zero. Six times nine is 54, 56, seven, 24. Six times five is 30, four, 24, six, and five. So we're gonna add all these up. 54 plus 56 plus seven plus 24 plus 30 plus four, plus 24, plus six, plus five. Again, grabbing my calculator to add all those up. This time I get 210. And again, the question is, is this divisible by 11? Remember, we're not looking for whether it ends in a zero. That was the kind of checking we did for some of the systems we talked about in the previous lecture. This time we're checking to see if this is divisible by 11. So what I'm gonna do is divide it by 11 on my calculator, 210 divided by 11, is 19.0909 and so on. And because I got a decimal part, so that means that 210 is not evenly divisible by 11. 
there's some leftovers, there's some remainder. And we learned in a previous lecture how to figure out exactly what the remainder is. But I don't need to know that here. I just need to know that there is a remainder other than zero. And so that means the answer to this question of is my number divisible by 11 is no. So this tells us that the ISBN that we're looking at here, this ISBN, is not valid, which means the error was detected. So the answer to this question is yes, the error was detected. Let's do one more example. This time, when we've seen this kind of problem before, we have a missing check digit. We don't know what the check digit should be, so we're going to try to figure that out. So the way that we do this is we run our validation process with that unknown number listed there. I'm just going to call it a question mark. If you want to call it x and do a little bit of algebra, that's okay too. So I'm going to use my weight pattern 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 0 times 10 is 0, 5 times 9 is 45, that's 8, 9 times 7 is 63, 9 times 6 is 54, 4 times 5 is 20, 0, 0, 6, and question mark times 1 is question mark. Okay, so we add all these up, 0 plus 45 plus 8 plus 63 plus 54 plus 20 plus 0 plus 0 plus 6 plus our question mark, and what we want is for this to be divisible by 11. Well, we can't add the question mark, but we can add all the other numbers. So we're going to add all those up. And again, I'll grab my calculator. And this thing is going to give us 196. So all of these numbers all added together is 196. So we want this to be divisible by 11. In other words, I want 11 to go into this some whole number of times with zero remainder. Well, in order to help us think about that, what I want to do is what's the remainder when 196 is divided by 11? So if I take 196 and divide by 11, let's see what we get. 196 divided by 11 is going to be 17.818181. So what's the remainder? Well, remember that what we're going to do is take 11 times 17. We were dividing by 11, so we take 11 times 17 that's going to give us 187. So we subtract 187 from 186, and we get 9. So the remainder is going to be 9. But what we want is when we add the question mark, we want the remainder to be 0. We don't want there to be anything left over. So this has 9 left over. So how much more do we have to add for there to be another whole group of 11? When we're dividing by 11, we're taking this number and splitting it into groups of 11. If we don't add a question mark, if we don't add anything there at all, we'll have 9 left over. So if we add 2 more, that'll be another whole group of 11, and this will be divisible by 11. So let's check this out. So we're going to put in a 2 for the question mark. So we get 196 plus 2 is 198. Is 198 divisible by 11? Checking on my calculator, 198 divided by 11 is 18 with no remainder or 18.0. So that checks this is in fact divisible by 11. So it's a little bit tricky. We've got to be a little bit of a detective, but you figure out what the remainder is of the numbers that you have, and then you figure out how much more do you have to add to end up with the exact remainder that you want. Now there is one exception here. It is possible that the digit we would have to add, the extra we would have to add so that we had another whole group of 11, we might have to add 10. And so that's more than one digit. So instead, what you'll see is we'll use the symbol x as the check digit. So rather than a digit there, we use an x to represent the idea that that check digit is 10. So you may see this in some different books. If you, you know, look at a bunch of different books, eventually you'll find one that has an x as the check digit. So if we see one and we want to check it, again, what we're going to do is figure out this weighted sum. So 07167 1910x. So we're going to multiply by our weight pattern, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and then x is 10, which we're going to multiply by 1. So that's 0, 7 times 9 is 63, that's 8, 6 times 7 is 42, 7 times 6 is 42, that's a 5, 9 times 4 is 36, 3, 0, and 10 times 1 is 10. So we're going to add these up, 0 plus 63 plus 8 plus 42 plus 42 plus 5 plus 36 
plus 3 plus 0 plus 10. Add all that up. And that's going to work out to be 209. And remember that what we're checking now is, is this divisible by 11? So we take 209, divide it by 11. We get 19 with zero remainder. No decimal part here means that, yes, it is divisible by 11. So yes, this ISBN is valid. OK, so we've talked about ISBNs. The other check digit system I want to talk about in this video is for credit card numbers. So a credit card number is 16 digits long. And again, if you have a credit card, you might have noticed that. In fact, it's printed on the card in groups of four. And the 16th digit, you might not have known this, the 16th digit, the very last digit of your credit card number, is a check digit. And the method that we use for computing the check digit, for validating the check digit, is a modified version of a weighted sum. And this method is called the Loon algorithm. So it's very similar to a weighted sum. We're going to use the weight pattern 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, and so on. But this time, if we multiply by 2, and if that would result in a two-digit number, instead what we do is we add those two digits together. So if we were going to, for example, double an 8, instead of adding 16 to our total, we would add 7. 1 plus 6 is 7. We would add 7 to the total. So that gives us a bunch of results. We're going to add those results. And if the resulting sum ends in 0, then the ID number is valid. So let's give this a shot. So here we have a credit card number, 4128-0012-3456-7896. So again, we're going to do this pretty similarly. The only thing that's going to be weird is that occasionally when we double a number, if that turns out to be a two-digit result, then instead we add those two digits together. So our weight pattern is 212121. And most of the time, this is just going to be a normal multiplication process. OK, so 4 times 2 is 8. Nothing weird happens there. 1 times 1, 2 times 2, 8 times 1, 0, 0. So far, everything's normal. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 1 is 4. All right, here we go. So 5 times 2 is 10. Because 10 is two digits, instead, we add 1 plus 0, which is 1. So 1 is going to get added to our total. 6 times 1 is 6. Nothing weird happens there. 7 times 2 is 14. So again, we do the weird thing. So instead of adding 14 to our total, 1 plus 4 is 5. So we're going to add 5 to our total. 8 times 1 is 8. 9 times 2 is 18. Because that's a two-digit number, because 18 is two digits, we're going to instead add 1 plus 8, which is 9, to our total. And then 6 plus 1 is 6. So the numbers that I'm going to add here, I'm going to add all these numbers to my total. And then I'm going to add these numbers to my total. So my total is going to be 8 plus 1 plus 4 plus 8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 2 plus 2, all those numbers in the first column, plus 6 plus 4 plus 1, right? here's the 1 that I'm adding, plus 6 plus 5, here's the 5 that I'm adding, plus 8 plus 9, here's the 9 that I'm adding, plus 6. So I add all that up. When I add all those numbers up, I get 70. And because that ends in a zero, this is a valid credit card number. So this Loon algorithm detects all possible substitution errors and almost every transposition error. The only type of transposition error it doesn't catch is switching a 0, 09 to 90. Every other transposition error will be caught. And just like the UPC system, because the Loon algorithm uses an alternating pattern of weights, 2, 1, 2, 1, back and forth like that, it won't be able to detect any jump transposition errors because if any two digits are separated by one space and I swap them, they're still being multiplied by the same weights. So there won't be any way that we'll be able to detect a jump transposition here. OK, so here's a summary of the weighted sum systems that we talked about in these two lectures. So UPC numbers, we have a weight pattern of 3131 and so on, and the number is valid if the sum ends in 0. The, for routing numbers, our weight pattern is 739, 739, and so on. And again, the number is valid if the sum ends in 0. For ISBNs, the weight pattern is 1098, and so on, all the way down to 1. And the number is valid if the sum is divisible by 11. So a little bit of an exception for that one. And then also keep in mind that the check digit can be x, which represents the number 10. 
And then for credit card numbers, we're using the Loon algorithm, where the weight pattern is 2121 and so on. But if doubling a digit would give us a two-digit number, instead we add those two digits and take that total and add it to our sum. And again, the number is valid if the sum ends in zero. So the things to keep in mind, the exceptions here are that ISBNs is the only one where you're not looking for it to end in zero, you're looking for it to be divisible by 11. And the credit card number is this weird two-digit number, you add the digits together, and so it's a little bit different than just adding the results to your sum. So a little bit of uh, exceptions in, these, uh, in this video uh, to these last couple of patterns, but uh, hopefully this summary helps.